My name is Ishal Abdul Halain. Welcome to my video on the branch on condition codes instruction. Part 1. Let's begin. All of the instructions in the BCC group reads the value of a condition code, CC for short, to determine whether to branch or not. According to its general flow chart, a branch is executed if the condition code is 1. If it is 0, the preceding instruction is executed instead. Usually, an arithmetic or logical instruction such as CMP or ANDI is placed before a BCC instruction. This is because these instructions can be used to set the condition codes before the BCC instruction evaluates its outcome. We will talk more about condition codes shortly. There are 15 instructions in the BCC group. Notice that all of the instructions start with the letter B. This stands for branch. The preceding letters tell us the name of what the instruction does. For example, BGE stands for branch greater or equal. The microprocessor knows whether to branch or not by observing the condition codes of the instruction, as shown here. These codes are actually Boolean expressions. The terms in the expressions come from the condition code register's flags. The flags are C, N, V, and Z. As an example, for the BGE instruction, the 68K will branch when its condition code, given by the Boolean expression N and V, ORD with N bar, and V bar, result is a logic one. It will not branch otherwise. The general syntax for all BCC instructions are BCC, label. A label is a variable that holds the address of the instruction. The 68K knows where to branch to, by looking at this label. The instruction to be executed, if the condition code is 1, must be attached to this label. Here is an example. The label name I chose is great, for the branch greater than instruction. If the instruction CLRD0 is the instruction I wish to branch to, I would include the label's name, great, followed by a colon, and place it before CLRD0. Thus, when the condition codes for BGT great is logic 1, my program will execute the instruction CLRD0. Let's move on. Let's study the branch not equal instruction. This instruction initiates a branch if the condition code is zero. It will not branch otherwise. The general syntax is BNE label. The condition code is only Z bar. Here is an example on how the BNE instruction is used. Let's pretend this code is part of a big fancy program. Notice how a compare instruction is placed before the BNE instruction. This is very important. When compare.ld0d1 is executed, the data values in d0 and d1 are compared as follows. The destination is subtracted by the source operand, and the result is not saved in the destination. However, the status register is affected, because a subtraction operation has been carried out. The BNE instruction is executed next. It first checks the Z flag value. If it is 0, then, the instruction JSRA0, attached to label loop is executed. If not, then the instructions following the BGT instruction are executed next. This program is called memory to memory. It's a simple program for us to study the branch not equal instruction in a more realistic situation. Its purpose is to move data from memory into a register. 1000 is then subtracted from the data. The result is moved back into a new memory location for storage, this process is repeated for two times. This flowchart shows the algorithm for our memory to memory program. The first process to be carried out is to initialize all operands. We will need two address registers. One for pointing to the source operand in memory. We will read it into a data register and use it as our minuend. Yes, minuend. So, what is a minuend? If you remember in school, the teacher that taught mathematics explained that a minuend is a number that another number is subtracted from. For example, 5 minus 3 equals 2. 5 is the minuend, while 3 is called the subtrahend. The result, is called the difference. Now that was cool. And back to our flow chart. 
another address register will be used to point to our destination operand in memory. It will point to the address where we will store our results. We would also need one register to store our subtrahend. Finally, we would also need to initialize a loop counter, this is because I am planning to use a loop to execute several repeated instructions in this program. The second process is to instruct the microprocessor to retrieve data from memory, the data would be our minuend. Notice that I have attached a label to this box, the label's name is load, thus, the first instruction I will use in this box, will have an address equal to load, this will be the starting address of the instructions that we will repeat in our loop. The third process is to execute the subtraction process. The fourth process is to write the results back into memory. The fifth process is to decrement my counter by one. I am planning to decrement my counter because I want the program to stop when my counter value is zero. The sixth process will be a decision making process. I would like the program to branch and repeat the second process for two times, this will happen as long as my counter is not zero. Okay, here is the program developed from our flowchart. It starts at address 1000. I'm including the program line. With this, we will be able to track our program easily. The first four instructions correspond to the first process box here, they are just move commands. I'm using them to initialize my address pointers, subtrahend value, and counter value. The next instruction corresponds to this box. The move instruction is used to move data from memory, at the address pointed by address register A0. The data, which is our menu end, is stored in D0. Since a post increment addressing mode is used for the source operand, A0 is incremented after the data has been moved. This is good, because the source data address pointer, will automatically point to the next menu end's address each time the loop is repeated. A simple subtract instruction corresponds to this box. Note that 1000 has been initialized in register D1. You can see this done in the first instruction. Note also that D0 contains our menu end, that was read from memory. Thus this instruction will subtract 1000 from the menu end and store the results in register D0. The next instruction corresponds to this box. It's used to transfer the results, which is in register D0, into memory. The address to write to is pointed by address register A6. A post increment on A6 is chosen such that A6 will always automatically point to the next address to store our new results. The next instruction corresponds to this box. I'm using a subtract instruction to decrement my loop counter by 1. Note that register D6 is my loop counter. At line 2, I initialized it to 2. The next two instructions corresponds to our decision making box. In order to branch when the condition code is 0, I'm using a compare instruction followed by a branch not equal instruction. The compare instruction will compare my counter's value with 0. As long as my counter's value is not 0, the compare instruction resets the Z flag. The BNE instruction sees this, and branches to label load. However, once my counter value is 0, the compare instruction will cause the Z flag to be set to 1, the BNE instruction then checks the Z flag, and sees that it is 1. The program will not branch to load. It will simply end. Notice that we can branch if an operand's value is greater than another operand's value by using a compare instruction followed by a BNE instruction. Cool. Before we simulate this program, I am showing you the 16 bytes of data at address 2070, and the 16 bytes of data at address 2080 in memory, because it is related to our program. I'm also showing data register D0 which we will use to process data and temporarily store our results. Next, is register D1, for our subtrahend. We also have register D6, our loop counter. Then, we have register A0. We will use this to point to the source operand address, that contains our menu end. Finally, we also have A6. It will point to the destination operand address, where we will store our calculation results. The program will read these two data strings and subtract them with 1000, one at a time. The results are stored here. Let's execute the program. Upon execution, the first instruction moves 1000 into register D1. It will be our subtrahend and will remain unchanged there. Then, the second instruction is executed. It moves 2 to D6. 
D6 is our loop counter and has been initialized to 2. The third instruction is executed next. It moves data 2070 into register A0. This will be the initial address where we will get our menu and from. The fourth instruction is executed next. It moves data 2080 into register A6. This will be the initial address where we store our initial result in. This concludes our register initialization process, cool. Next, the fifth instruction is executed. Since the operand size for this move instruction is .w, 16 bits of data will be moved from address 2070 into register D0. The data value 9999, which is our first menu and value is now safe in register D0, address register A0 is incremented to 2072. Upon executing instruction 6, the value in D0 is changed to 8999. This is because 9999 in register D0 is subtracted by 1000 in register D1, the result is then stored in D0. When instruction 7 is executed, the result in D0 is moved to address 2080 because the destination operand, A6, is pointing to 2080. After the data is stored in memory, A6 is incremented to 2082. Instruction 8 is executed next. It decrements our loop counter, which is register D6, to 1. Then, instruction 9 is executed. It compares the loop counter's value with 0. Since the loop counter is register D6, its value is not equal to 0. Thus, the Z flag is reset to 0. When instruction 10 is executed, the BNE instruction sees that D6 is not 0 by checking the Z flag. Thus, the program branches back to the label load. Since we branched to label load, we are back at line 5 in our program. Upon execution, the instruction moves 16 bits of data from address 2072 into register D0. We now have our second menu ends value, which is 0888 safe in register D0. Then, register A0 is incremented to 2074. Upon executing instruction 6, the value in D0 is changed to F888. This is because 0888 in register D0 is subtracted by 1000 in register D1, the result is then stored in D0. When instruction 7 is executed, the result in D0 is moved to address 2082 because the destination address pointer, A6, is pointing to 2082. After the data is stored in memory, A6 is incremented to 2084. Instruction 8 is executed next. It decrements our loop counter, which is register D6, to 0. Then, instruction 9 is executed. It compares the loop counter's value with 0. Since the loop counter is register D6, its value is 0. Thus, the Z flag is set to 1. When instruction 10 is executed, the BNE instruction sees that D6 is 0 by checking the Z flag. Thus, the program does not branch. It continues with the next instruction. In this case, the program simply ends. This is how the memory to memory program works. Okay, that's all we have for you. I hope that you learned something new. In part 2, we will look at a more detailed example of another BCC instruction. Have a nice day.